YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back. Recapping Sunday's NFL action from week three. We're doing this video every single Monday. Also, have updated power rankings every week, predictions for each game, score predictions, plenty more. Hopefully, you can join us for all that. If you want even more content, our Patreon has a lot more. Weekly mock drafts and playoff slash Super Bowl predictions updated. Going to update both of those and put them on the Patreon this week. A lot of big changes, a lot of big-time quarterbacks moving way up my board on the mock drafts. Uh, bonus videos as well. Private Discord chat you can join, which is very cool. So check it out, patreon.com slash the goat house. Link in the description. And like I said, we got you covered with NFL content, so please subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on. We're trying to get to that 40K goal by the end of this year. We think we can do it with your help. Click that like button. Check us out on Twitter, always talking during live games. <clears throat> Let's start with the Raiders in the and the Vikings. Uh, not much of a game here. Uh, the Vikings just seem like a totally different team at home. Um, so I want them to prove to me they can execute away, which I think they can because even in the Packers game, minus the very start, uh, the whole team played pretty well except for the quarterback, uh, Kirk Cousins. So, uh, but they are still a big, big time difference in a home and away. You know, it's just they have, and the Falcons turned out they're not so good right now. But the Falcons and the Raiders games just completely dominant at home. Just looked like the other team just, you know, couldn't get anything going. My only takeaway from the Vikings here. Um, really, I mean, they played a good game, but uh, the running game was dominant. That's in the offense line definitely looks improved. Uh, and on the Raiders side, you know, it didn't look good. You know, not not a good looking season for the Raiders. Just didn't have enough. You know, the only good thing is Darren Waller. He looked really good. I like the way they're using him. Um, but really, not that many takeaways. I guess it was a dominant game, but you can't you can't have too many takeaways from this game. Really, I mean, the Vikings are going to continue to play real good football at home, as expected. Uh, and this was my lock of the week for kind of that reason. I didn't see them losing two in a row, especially going to home on this game. Uh, the Raiders got some work to do, though. Um, you know, but yeah, the only good thing was really Waller. That Vikings running back duo looks ridiculous. Delvin Cook's playing like the best running back in football. And Matt, it looked like they got a steal uh, out of Madison. You know, I'd say Josh Jacobs is still the number one rookie back. But after that, you know, I'm still, I think Montgomery's going to show us some stuff It's as long as he gets the ball for the Bears. But after that, Madison as a backup looks like one of the top rookie backs. Uh, super impressive. Uh, so that running game, that's how the Vikings win games. But if teams like figure out how to, to you know, eliminate that, if they can, then they may have a problem. But defense looked good without Anthony Barr, too. There's really not much to go over on this game. Uh, next game is the Bengals and Bills. It's actually a very good one. The Bills are 3-0. But it's they haven't really. I mean, it's hard enough to go three and zero. It's the NFL. Anybody can win every week. It's so unpredictable. So you have to give them credit for three and zero. They're streaking. They're feeling good. They feel like a playoff team. They can definitely get there. Um, but they haven't impressed me all that much, honestly. With the teams they played and how they execute, they should they should easily win this game. Josh Allen to me. I know they won the game, but you know, but Josh Allen was holding on to the ball way too much for me. You know, Frank Gore had a pretty good game. Defense stepped up. I thought Jordan Poyer was just all over the field. Was a Jordan Phillips was a was a dominant force of the D tackle position too. Um, so I mean a good game. I like this Bills defense. I always like this Bills defense. Uh, the Bengals. I mean you finally got Mixon going, but a little bit. You know it's just not enough. But I guess it's good to see him getting going. It was your leading receiver was Auden Tate. I guess he had a pretty solid game, but um, it's a disaster of a season. You know. Uh, I don't see it. You know, I was saying the Bengals always start the year off good, and then they kind of just blow it. And I kind of thought that was going to happen again. Um, maybe it's opposite. Maybe they start going now. I get going now. I just don't see it. Uh, Dalton's not playing good football. You know, you know, really, he's he's definitely better than Ryan Finley right now. But at this point, I mean, it's it's still pretty early. But at this point, oh, it's almost like let's put Finley in there. Let's see if he can become something. Let's see if he's our. Let's see if we need to draft a quarterback early next year, which I think they do. But. Let's put Finley in there because even if they turn the season around, even if the Bengals turn the season around, what's the ceiling? You know, where are you going to go, really? what's You're not going to do anything. You can turn the season around. You can win some games. Where are they going to go? You might as well put Finley in there, maybe give it another game for Dalton. Um, I, the Week one and week three were winnable for the Bengals, so maybe maybe they, they think they can turn it around, but... Um, you know, the Bills got a tougher road coming up, but the momentum is key. 3-0, and you get some momentum, you play the Patriots coming up, um, you know, so it's going to be a fun game. Going to be a fun game there, Bills 3-0, and very impressive. Next game, Dolphins and Cowboys, not much to go over on this one. I really thought Rosen played a solid game. His receivers definitely didn't help him. You know, Parker had that bad drop. 
Um, you know, a lot of unfortunate just plays that ended up in turnovers, which I think it could have been a, a, a lot closer game if they didn't turn the ball over in the red zone so much or drop so many balls. Uh, but because you know, the, the Cowboys were inconsistent, mainly Dak, you know, one second, not sure what he's doing, holding on the ball too long on uh, the interception. You know, I was picturing as he let that go, I was kind of picturing a wide open receiver or something, just threw it directly to the Dolphins. Uh, but then he'll have his like crazy moments, um, you know, his really his big play moments too. You know, the one where he's early in the game, he's rolling out and he acts like he's going to run. He drives the DB up, gets the wide open receiver, dumps it off. You know, plays like that are just great. Uh, but inconsistent game from him. Uh, but overall, a good day for the Cowboys. Zeke really got going. I think Zeke's kind of holding back a little bit too. You know, I, I think it looks like he's gained some strength. I kind of noticed, but I laterally, you know, he doesn't really. He's not. He hasn't been moving too much. So I don't know if that's you know, like a thing with him or it's just because he doesn't want to put any pressure on the knees right now when they have a comfy lead. So and I think he's holding back a little bit. So I think we could even see more of Zeke. Amari Cooper had a tremendous game, route running, catching the ball. Um, but for the Dolphins, yeah, I, I, Rosen's, Rosen's underrated. He, he can play. Um, you know, he doesn't have a lot of help. But Preston Williams, it's sad that he's their best receiver, honestly. Um, and he looks solid, but it's pretty bad. And it is a running back situation. You know, Kenyon Drake's not he's, he's not the answer. And then I thought Balage could be the future running back, but he doesn't look like the answer, too. Just not – I'm sure he's running to play good, but it doesn't look like it. You know, I think it's just – he's got to hit the hole, and he's got to go. You know, I see a lot of putting his head down and running in the tackles. Um, you know, not not as much athleticism as I, as I see glimpses of. Uh, it's just – maybe it's just like – the morale, you know, maybe it's just like the team, what's going on. Cause I see Xavier Howard looks like he's not even trying. Um, you know, maybe that's just it, what's happening here. You know, I, I don't know. It's, it's a rough one for the worst team in football here and an easy one for the Cowboys. Uh, Broncos and Packers, a uh, strange game in the beginning because I felt like the Broncos were kind of outplaying the Packers. I don't even want to say outplaying. I think the Broncos were playing better than the Packers early in this game. And they're kind of just shooting themselves in the foot, you know, just fumbles, the Flacco interception. You got to credit the Packers defense. They went another game. But then after that started happening, you know, momentum, the Packers just completely outplayed them at the end. Um, you know, you got to give credit to this Packers defense. Um, you know, on the offensive side, guys stepped up. Valde Scantling stepped up. You know, Aaron Jones, I wish he can do a little better. It's a good Broncos defense, though. I really want to see, I really want to see Dexter Williams, but I was super high on Dexter Williams, and he's been inactive for the Packers. A healthy scratch, I believe. I want to see him play. I mean, this this guy, I know my running backs, all right? I know my running backs. I've hit on so many. Uh, it's not really they need him, but I think they can definitely use him. This guy, the reason, you know, people are lower on him and maybe he's not playing is because he can't catch the goddamn ball. He can't catch it. But this guy is so good at hitting the hole, and he's a home run hitter. I need it. I want to see this guy play. You know, I, I'm going to be rooting for him the, once he – um, you know, gets in there for the Packers. It's I want to see this guy play. I, I want to get. I want to see him get a chance. You see Aaron Jones where he was drafted. That was another one of my sleepers, sleeper running back, um, a couple years ago actually. Uh, and he gets a chance and he shows it. You know, Dexter Williams needs a chance. You know, practice game. It's a difference. You know, big difference. Uh, but the Packers defensively got to give credit to man that pass rush duel. If you remember, right after free agency ended, we did like a predictions video, a post free agency predictions video, and I predicted the Packers like top of the NFC North, and I was feeling them. And then I kind of calmed down, and then I was like telling myself, you know, might be the free agency hype. You know, I might be getting a little too hyped. I had to calm down. Are these guys gonna? It's a great, two great signings at the pass rusher spot, but are they gonna click right away? You know, two new faces there. Um, and they are right now, and that's what's impressive. You know, uh, Preston Smith is more of a run-stopping guy, but he adds, what do you get, three sacks in that game, adds that. Darius Smith, you kind of wondered, you know, because last year was like his only good year, but it was a really good year. Can he continue that? Yes, you know, it, he's, he's continuing it. So that, that pass rush duo was great in this game. It looks great overall so far. Uh, Blake Martinez, who I think is underrated, had himself a really good game, getting in the backfield. Um, you know, high motor guy, kind of getting around. Uh, Jair Alexander had a bit, had a big game. You know, people have been hyping him up. I hyped him up out of Louisville first two weeks. You know, I wish I saw a little more. And there we go. That's a big time game from him. Uh, he's got a bright future. So I mean, the defense was clicking. The Broncos is unfortunate. You know, it's just they look like they had the game. They really it's still to this day they look like they won the game last week against the Bears. So that was an unfortunate loss. And they played really good at the end. Some mistakes, but the offense kind of got going. They they and the defense got going. And the same thing in this game, they were, the short game was working, they were moving the ball, and then a mistake happened. And the defense played pretty well. You know, the Packers were starting in great field position. They scored how many points on on how many turnovers, you know. Um, so 
it's bad the Broncos are 0-3, but I think they're going to continue to get better. You know, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs at this point. It's hard to say that. It's only three weeks, and they haven't looked good. But, um, you know, they're going to continue to get better. I think Flacco, for the most part, is throwing the ball. He's going to stay a little more consistent. He's throwing the ball okay, uh, but it's mainly the short game. Uh, Royce Freeman, I mean, Lindsey looked good in this game, too. Lindsey looked good, but Royce Freeman looks really good. He had a touchdown taken away from him, a bunch of missed tackles on that one. Really good run, breaking tackles. Uh, and that should not have been taken back, honestly. I don't think it would have changed this game. You know, the Packers, I think, if it was close, I think they would have made that extra game-changing play again to win this game. But that touchdown should not have been called back. That was uh, a lot of... A lot of BS holding calls this year. A lot of BS in out of any any game, any teams. A lot of BS holding calls and a lot of BS ones not getting called. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that wasn't a game. I guess you could say it was a game changing moment. But uh, yeah, the Packers defense was dominant. They would have made that next play, and they they really should be that good in this game. I, I picked them up in their defense up in both my fantasy leagues uh, this week, so that worked out. So kind of expected the Packers defense to be that good, but. Um, another step in that right direction. The Packers are, are feeling good right now. Got the Eagles next week. Got the next game. Falcons and the Colts. Just disappointing for the Falcons. Uh, the Colts are without well, they're without Andrew Luck first, obviously. They're without Darius Leonard in this one. T.Y. Hilton goes down. Um, but that doesn't seem so like super serious. I heard it's a quad injury. I think they were kind of playing it safe because they were up. So hopefully. And then Malik Hooker. Um, meniscus tear, and I heard four to six weeks. I, I'm on the higher side of that. Six weeks at the least, in my opinion. I, if the guy comes back after four weeks of a meniscus tear, um, when Derek Rose said it an entire year, and it's a different sport, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think uh, he could be out longer than that. So it's kind of an unfortunate day with the injuries for the Colts, but it's a big-time win. Um, you know, without Darius Leonard, you know, the linebacker stepped up. Anthony Walker was all over the place. Bobby Okereke, the Stanford uh, rookie, Good showing for him. It was it was a good day. You know, Hooker actually came back in. I think when he's hurt too, he's a it's a tough dude there. But unfortunate injury. Uh, but they played very well. You know, the score really won't show it how dominant it was. You know, the Falcons started off very poor. Matt Ryan not looking. If you if you're with us in the offseason predictions, our, our guy Junior here at the Goat House just said the Falcons aren't going to be good. They're overrated. Matt Ryan's going to become washed up. And I just thought that was out there, unlike any other prediction. And it's too early to say to confirm it, but he's looking pretty. He's looking pretty smart right now with that one. I don't know how, um, but he he actually, it's looking pretty good for him. Uh, the stats will show Matt Ryan had a good game. He came back when they were down. Good for him then, but it, you can't start like that. Same thing happened in the Minnesota game. The start was so bad that they put the, themselves out of it. Uh, the Falcons struggle away. It looks like. Uh, they just even in the Eagles win, they didn't look that good. Honestly, they had their moments. They didn't look that good. Um, this is rough right now. It's rough. I mean, Julio looked really good. Keanu Neal goes down. He's out for the season. Just unfortunate. Um, it's just, and I kind of knew they were going to come back. I just knew the Falcons were going to come back, but I knew the Colts were still going to win. It's kind of just got that feeling. Um, you know, Marlon Mack played a great game for the Colts. I think they could have actually ran him a little more. I'm very excited about Marlon Mack. He's a very good running back. One of the top running backs in the league right now. Um, great coaching, you know, and that you're missing Andrew Luck. Brissett's good quarterback though. Uh, and you don't have Darius Leonard. You just know how to put the game away. You know how to coach this game. I like that execution at the end. I like that last call to Doyle. Most teams would have just ran it and, you know, not played to win the game, put the game away there. So, uh, good for them there. Impressive Colts team so far. Um, Falcons, the complete opposite. Very, very disappointing. A lot of season left though. Ravens and Chiefs. Uh, the scoreline in this game won't really show how close it was, or I mean how it's, the score. I said that backwards. The score showed it closer than it actually was. You know, the Chiefs dominated this game early. The Ravens' defense was getting after Mahomes. The blocking was terrible. Matthew Judon was getting after Mahomes every play. Looks really good. I'm like, oh man, Ravens might win this one. Uh, they couldn't really get anything going on offense. Not not uh, not Lamar's best game. Um, you know, I don't blame him too much for some of those. Th- throw the ball up for grabs. Everyone's letting them have for that. I mean, they were winning jump balls, and what are you going to do at that point when you're trying to come back? But obviously not a pretty throw on some of those. Uh, but it's so easy for people to turn on Lamar Jackson. There's some guys that have continue to struggle, continue to struggle, continue to do the same things, not improving. And they're like, no, they'll be fine. They're just rusty. You know, they're still developing. And then as soon as a guy like Lamar, some people are just special, I guess, when it comes to the, the media and the, the sports world. I don't know. Um but not really a good showing offensively. No, re, re, nobody really can get anything going besides uh, um, Mark Ingram was running the ball very well. Uh, but really, I mean, the defense was solid. What are you going to do against? Uh, you know, they started off better than they finished. But what are you going to do against the Chiefs? Really, you know, I thought Kenny Young was the guy that was standing out a little bit. Tony Jeff- Jefferson was solid, I guess. 
Uh, but Mahomes, I mean, what could you say? I mean, he's the MVP of every single week. He's the MVP of every single week. He's going to win the MVP again. It's unreal. I mean, if the, if no crazy injury happens, this guy's going to go down as the best of all time. Like, I'm already going to say it. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's really, you could say it off his arm town alone, but it's more than that. You know, he's smart. He can adjust at the line. It's just super impressive. Um, just just unreal. And without Damian Williams, LaMichelle McCoy is banged up apparently, but, I mean, he played all right. Without Tyreek Hill, um, you know, Demarcus Robinson's really coming along. In uh, the defensive side, they gotta get you gotta give them credit. They played, you know, 28 points won't show how good they played. Uh, I think they definitely could use another secondary player, another corner. I think they need to tra- trade for Jalen Ramsey. I think they're the favorites. They're, you know, that's what they, what they need. Uh, Frank Clark finally got his sack. You know, he hasn't really been getting going yet. So, is that a concern, or is that, you know, he's gonna? I, I think he's gonna really get going as season goes on. You know, he's kind of just fitting in. So that's a scary thing. Really, I think it's a good thing. But in the back of your mind's like, ooh, is this trade gonna work out? Like he needs to get going, but. You know, defense looks good right now, and they, they got more. They got more coming. That's why the Chiefs team's so scary. That's a good win, and that's a good football team. The Ravens are still a very good football team as well. Uh, the Jets and the Patriots don't have much about this one, except I'm kind of pissed because I predicted to score 30 to nothing Patriots, and the Jets didn't even score an offense. They got a pick six and, uh, what was it, a blocked punt. So um, I was right until that, you know, two fluky things there. So, I mean, all right, Philip Dorsett looked good. Josh Gordon had some ridiculous plays. Edelman got hurt, so that kind of sucks, you know, losing Antonio Brown. Uh, I mean, releasing Antonio Brown, then maybe you'll lose Edelman for a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. No James White in this game. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. They're, they should dominate this game. They did. There's really nothing to go over here. Uh, Lions and Eagles, this was my upset pick of the week. Uh, I, I got this one. So, at this point, I'm like feeling it. I'm gonna pick them. So, you know, I'm getting them pretty darn close in score, and I'm getting all of them right. But then the afternoon games go a little weird, you know, unpredictable, I guess. But uh, the Lions, uh, very good game in this one for them. They look pretty good. The Eagles are beat up, and people are just keep saying that's like that's the excuse, and it could be the excuse, but you can't act surprised. You know, I hate, I hate that I, I mean this too. I hate that I was kind of right about the Eagle in the off season about the Eagles being hurt. I couldn't trust them to stay healthy, but I was kind of wrong at the same time because I thought that would come late in the season. It's already starting. And I said that about the linemen. Like, it's a good offensive line, but I don't know if they can stay healthy. And you got Jason Peters going down. You got Andre Diller, the backup, going down. I didn't think Andre Diller was going to get hurt. And Wentz is still healthy. Meanwhile, all, all this is going on. Wentz is still healthy. Um, the secondary is a mess. Running back situation. Another thing I'm going to pat my back, pat myself on the back about is Miles Sanders. Everybody ripped me because I was not high on him at all in the in the pre-draft process because of uh, hesitation, but mainly fumbling problem. And both of them are glaring right now. He hesitates in the backfield, does not hit the hole. He fumbled twice, was fortunate that he only lost one. Um, he had a fumbling problem at Penn State. That doesn't go away. All right, it doesn't go away. Um, they're they're forcing him too much. Jordan Howard's a much better running back. Not that he's anything good anymore. You, I mean, he used to be. Um, but he's a much better running back. This team needs to go open up the trade talks for Melvin Gordon again. They need that running back. They need somebody. It doesn't even have to be Melvin Gordon. They need somebody. They're they're forcing the rookie. Miles Sanders can get better. Um, I liked him. I liked him in the receiving game. I liked him in the passing game, catching the ball. Um, but they got to stop forcing him. He's not the answer. Uh, there's a bunch of better rookie running backs, and I think Jordan Howard's much better. Uh, and I, to me, Wentz needs to be more consistent, be smarter with the ball. I just don't think he's been playing good. Um, you know that. They actually got another chance after that. Before the block field goal, they had like fourth and nine. He decided to run on that one. If you're going to run on that one, you got to be damn sure and you got to go all out. For It reminded me of that two-point conversion a week ago against the Falcons. It's like, if you're going to run, go get it in there. You know, it's kind of like the diving way short. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like the – I just you have to throw that ball. Bottom line is you have to throw that ball. Uh, the Lions look, look pretty darn good, though, and the running game could be a little better. Uh, that, that was kind of rough, honestly. Um, but they did what they had to do. It's a unique team. It's a unique defense. I've been saying it. You know, I love the pressure they get, the blitzes. You know, they ain't going to get a bunch of sacks, but they don't need to. They really don't need to. Uh, young secondary guys looking pretty good. Uh, Trey Flowers look like look, looks like a good pickup. Well, we knew he's a good pickup, but he looked like he actually played like it in this game and snacks. Uh, played pretty good. Mike Daniels did get hurt, but they got a limited depth there at the D-line position. Good job building that up. I mean, the Eagles had a chance in this game. That's what was surprising because I thought the Lions were well-deserved in this game, and they dominated this game. Um, you know, Al- Aguilar had his mistakes, but then he had two big touchdowns, you know, poor tackling on one of them from the Lions. And then, um, 
Yeah, you know, I will say I did not like the uh, some of the calls in this game. What was it? Was that Miles Sanders that almost got his head taken off? Uh, and they didn't call. They didn't call anything on that one. Uh, but the bat. I think I was saying on Twitter one of the worst calls of the year was uh, it was Darren Sproles catching the ball on the sideline. He was like in the act of catching the ball up in the air at the ball in his hands. I think it was Jared Davis that went over and just popped him. Great football play, square in the middle, hit him right here in the chest, and they threw the flag. And that's all terrible. That's all bad. But the worst part, what makes it one of the worst calls of the year, is their call was hit on a defenseless player. And I just yelled when I heard that. I yelled. I was pissed because how is that a defenseless player? He caught. He was catching the ball. If he didn't hit him, he was going to catch the ball. I I, I don't know. And it's square in the middle. It's great football play. Penalized for just BS. Um, you know, they, they. I think they. And then the next play. The Eagles score, they throw the flag because they see a pick play. They see illegal blocking, and they discuss, and they pick it up. Regardless, and I don't think they were right in the end anyways. I think the, they were originally right. I, th- I, I believe he was, uh, you know, he was past the line of scrimmage, and he hit. It was a legal block. It was an illegal block, but regardless, maybe let's we'll say it's right in the end. I hate when they pick up flags because the guy's job is to throw a flag when he sees it. He saw it, so he threw the flag. What, what is going on in that discussion to pick it up? I think it's uh, sketchy as, as hell, and I've been saying that for a few years. Um, but it should have been called anyways. So they, then they, they wanted to make this one interesting, and it was pretty. It was quite obvious. Eagles got to step it up. They, they got to play the Packers this week, a hot Packers team, another NFC North team here. Uh, the Panthers and the Cardinals, this is where I started getting some games wrong. I was feeling it before this, but uh, Kyle Allen, impressive. And I I, I was kind of – I had high uh, – expect not super high, but I, I, I believe in Kyle Allen. You know, I had a draftable grade on him. Uh, unlike most people, he was number one recruit out of high school, so you know he has something. There's some kind of talent in there. You know, it doesn't mean a whole bunch at the NFL level, but there's some kind of talent in there. Uh, and he threw the ball very well. And it's crazy to think that the Panthers could actually would it, they would for sure be two and one. They would have beat the Buccaneers if Kyle Allen played. No doubt in my mind, they could be three and zero. They played, they played the Rams pretty close. Cam missed a whole bunch of easy uh, throws that were kind of crucial. Uh, that could have changed the game. They could be three and zero with Kyle Allen. That, that's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I, I like Cam a lot. It's just he's not healthy, and that that's just that's a fact. McCaffrey got going in this game. Got to credit the Panthers defense. The pass rush trio really, really impressed me. Uh, two of them rookies, the veteran Mario Addison, I think got three sacks. Super impressive from him, especially with the kind of defensive changes, the kind of a hybrid look. So how will he be? Is kind of the question mark. Good game. Uh, it was against the Cardinals' offense line, who I'm very disappointed in this game. And uh, then the two rookies, Brian Burns, who you expect from, and then Christian Miller, who I liked a lot. I was very high on because he has a lot of potential. You know, he's more of that raw guy. He's not going to give you that production right away because he used to be a stand-up linebacker. Now he's kind of playing this hybrid defense as a pass rusher, um, and he gets two sacks in this game. Um, you know, given different looks, super impressive. Super, and then um, they got Shaq Thompson in on some blitzes, some pressure. I like that. The the, the linebacker duo was great. Keekley and Thompson. It looks it looks good. The defense can continue to get better here. It was the Cardinals. It was their offense line, but it's a new look defense. Some of these players kind of fit it a little better than the Panthers defense guys have last year. Um, so the defense can continue to get better here. McCaffrey played a really good game. I kind of said that already. I think. Uh, but yeah, Dante Jackson stepped up. Have not liked his, has I have not liked his game so far this year. Early, very early in the year, but stepped up in this game. Good game. They made Kyler Murray look a little rough in this one. The offensive line looked really bad. Uh, the Cardinals really couldn't get anything going here. You know that was it was pretty much a dominant game from the Panthers. Um, Kyle Allen threw the ball very well. Very very impressive. Uh, that you know that Kyle Allen was the better quarterback in this game. Uh, maybe the difference in the offensive lines, I guess. Which the offensive line played pretty solid. So maybe. We put a lot more on Cam than – yeah, it looks solid at times. You know, Chandler Jones getting in there at times. I know they were using Reddick. Um, but I want to see more from the Panthers with Kyle Allen. It would be, be impressive if they can win with him. Uh, next game is the Giants and the Bucks. A crazy game, 32-31. So last week after the Bucks, uh won their game – uh, I was getting all kinds of comments from Bucks fan Deja Vu because it's third year straight. Um, uh, all kinds of comments from the Bucks fans, not only being very rude, really smack talking me. I don't know what for what reason actually, uh, but all but the main thing telling me that the Bucks have an elite defense. That their defense is elite based off that Panthers game, but for the whole season, elite defense, top five defense, multiple Bucks fans. Uh, so my takeaway from this is that Daniel Jones in his first start. With all the criticism, 
played a hell of a game and put up 32 points against, an, I guess, an elite defense. They're elite, I guess. So Daniel Jones in his first game did that against an elite defense. Yeah, I mean, you, Giants fans got to be pumped to do that against elite de- defense in Tampa. Just ridiculous, you know. Hell of a start. Um, bright future, it looks like. I mean, he has to be. I mean, um, you look at all these other quarterbacks that are veterans, and they're all rusty right now is the excuse. And first game in there, in all seriousness, though, he did play a he did play a great game. First game, it's tough to do. And like I said, yeah, a lot of quarterbacks are getting these excuses that they're rusty and need more time to develop. Daniel Jones' first game, kind of getting thrown in there in a bad situation. No Saquon Barkley in this game pretty much for the whole time. Uh, and he plays great. He plays great. He is a fumbler. Uh, it's 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 bad how he's how he fumbles so easy. Honestly, though, I mean, he threw the ball very well. You know, I said that in preseason. I kept seeing him dropping, losing the ball so easily. And uh, I said that in Twitter that on Twitter during one of those games that he could have a fumbling problem. And then he came in uh, the other week and he hit. He lost a fumble and he had two in this one. So that's a problem. But he was throwing the ball very well, very calm in the pocket. The reason I didn't really like him in the pre-draft process is I thought he got away with a lot that he won't get away in the NFL. A lot of kind of throwing off the back foot, panicking, kind of rather just throw the ball up for grabs and get sacked, and a lot of those balls didn't get picked. Um, So we can start to see that a little bit, but super impressive. It looks like he gained a lot of confidence, and this game will help him gain more. Uh, It's unfortunate that Barkley's going to be out for, I think, around six weeks, I I saw. And they had no running game in this game, and they still won the game. You know, the Buccaneers... I, you know the Buccaneers fans overreacting for just too many years straight now, and I try to I try to calm down. Yeah, I try to be you know, like, don't get your hopes up here. Uh, but you know, once again, it's gonna happen. It's only one game. It's early, and the NFC South's wide open. But the, you can throw all over the secondary. It's the secondary might be the worst in football. Um, you know, and Daniel Jones is able to throw all over. Evan Engram looks really good for the Giants. You know, fantasy owners of him got to be pretty excited because Daniel Jones likes him. He's gonna continue to get better there. Uh, and then defensively, I like Dexter Lawrence in this, this game. Golden was pretty solid. Dexter Lawrence I like a lot. Um, you know, the Bucks could have won this game if the guy can hit an extra point or, or a field goal. I just, you kind of got to know he's going to miss. I knew he's going to miss that watching that live. I'm just, just going to miss the kick. So, uh, I mean, Jameis played a solid game, and Mike Evans was ridiculous. Ronald Jones played good. So, the Bu- I mean, Winston's not going to play that good every week. We've seen what his bad game is, you know, and Mike Evans – um, he's a great receiver, but I mean, he's not going to put up that many numbers every week. Ronald Jones ain't going to run like that every week, and you still lose to a rookie quarterback that was ripped by everybody in his first start at home to the Giants, who was kind of kind of known as the second worst team after the Dolphins, and you still lose. So, not a good look from the Bucks. Once again, uh, you know, the most not all the fans, and I will say, I got to respect being confident. But once you come at me, and once you're um, out of nowhere too, no reason. And once you're unrealistic, I gotta say, the last three years that happened, looks like the Buccaneers might be the you know some some of the fans might be the most most like overreacting, unrealistic fans in the, in the NFL. You know, based off my comments the last three years. So I mean, they they gotta learn here. They gotta learn. It's still a lot of season. They can win games. The NFC South's wide open, but that team that defense isn't there where they think it's at. Uh, Texans and Chargers. Oh man, I, the Chargers. This is this is not not a good look here because they're up 17-7, and the Texans. What I don't know what Deshaun Watson was thinking early with that. He tried to throw it away, but he threw it back. That was bad. You know, somebody said that would look like Bortles like, and I agree with that. Uh, Chargers get all that, and they still can't. We're up 17-7. They can't win this game. Texans offense look like they got nothing. They had nothing going for them for the second straight straight week, and Chargers. They got nothing. You know, I, I don't know. And the Texans, credit to them, their offense got going. Watson really got going, moving around in the pocket, letting the ball fly. Uh, some of these play calls were great. Play designs were great. Getting uh, Atkins got two touchdowns. They had wide open at the end. Uh, and they got Kenny Stills going. The running game was, what did they have, like 30 yards rushing, just over 30 yards rushing, um, like an average of two or less. And the Chargers still can't win this game. They let them throw. You know, they know they're throwing. Secondary looks raw for the Chargers right now. I wish the pass rush was more existing. Um, and the pass protection for the Chargers is a disaster. You know, for the Texans team to get a consistent pass rush on you, uh, I know they got J.J. Watt. That's about it. You know, D.J. Reader had a day in pass, you know, in pass rush. Um, not good for the Chargers. Not not good. Pass protection looks rough. Dan Feeney is a disaster right now. I make mean, it run block, but pass protection, he's a disaster. Um, you know, most of the line is. So it's, I don't know, Chargers might be in trouble. They just don't, they don't look like they have enough. You know, there's not a whole bunch of offense on as much as we expected. Um, it's early still, but, and the defense isn't there. It's not as good as we expected. And with Derwin James out, kind of 
My expectations went down a little bit, but it's even further down than that. You know, I wish there was more a little more pass rush, especially against a against a Texans offense line. Credit to them. Um, but and they had a chance at the end. I wish they didn't bomb the ball on third and fourteen. Um, you know, get it a little closer. Or I know they didn't have any time, but he got some. You can do something. You don't need to go to the end zone. It was like the middle of the field, right short of the end zone too. I mean, get, try to get this first down. Look at the sideline. I don't know. It wasn't fourth down. They act like it was fourth down. Uh, but credit to the Texans, looking good there. Uh, second half run in that game. Uh, the Steelers and the Niners, a disaster for the Niners, and they still win. Um, I mean, fumbles and interceptions. You know, one of the interceptions was definitely not Garoppolo's fault. Um, but kind of a disaster. You know, there was a, I even saw that that play to use check. That was a deep ball. Um, they had a play act. Garoppolo had the play action on the wrong side of the field, the wrong side of the running back, I should say. And they still completed. So they looked a little slop. My, my my point is they looked a little sloppy all over the place in this game. But the good news is they still win. If they play their game, they easily win this game. But is it will that come up again, or is this because it's early? Uh, you know, credit to the defense locking down. I like a lot of these defensive players, like the linebackers. Uh, Buckner had himself a really good game. Buckner and Bosa, uh, the pressure they were applying. Um, you know, it's it's a pretty good pass rush. I think it'll it's going to continue to get better to the defense. I think you can throw downfield at times against this Niners team, though. I think you can't like not like they're going to get exposed or anything. But I think that's how you what you should do. I wish the Steelers did a little more of that. Just not enough. You know, it's Mason Rudolph's first game. Um, you know, that's kind of what I expected. I expected the Niners to win this one, you know, a little easier maybe. But if they would have, if it wasn't for the fumbles, uh, Rudolph's first game, I wish they would take a little more shots. You know, his weakness, like I said during the week and like I said in the pre-draft process uh, when he was uh, going into the draft, his weakness was like velocity on the ball and those out routes, which is like the most important throws uh, in football. And it kind of showed in this game a little bit, but we got some time here. They just need they just need more. They just need more. They were getting some good pressure early too. And that was the thing about the Niners too. Well, they really locked down at you know the rest of the game. Um, but a lot of collapsing pocket, a lot of, even on run plays, it was kind of collapsing because the 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 D line and the pressure of the Steelers. And now yeah, you know, kind of going back now. That was kind of what I was thinking about the Niners. You know, um, they've had one of the better offense lines to this point. You know, through two weeks uh, in football in terms of pressures allowed and you know. If you just watch them, you know, better offensive lines, but who they play, they played the Buccaneers who don't have much of a pass rush at all, and they played the Bengals who have, like, no pass rush. So that was kind of my worry in the beginning of this game. Okay, now they're playing kind of a, a good front. Um, could that be a problem? But they kind of figured out as the game game went on, and it was a good game again from the from the Niners' offensive line there. So weird game. They still got the win. Uh, they got to control They got to control the turnovers a little better, though, if they're, when they're going to play good teams here uh, coming up soon. Uh, next game, Saints and Seahawks, unpredictable game, weird, strange one. Um, credit to the, I credit the Saints uh, coaching staff here, like kind of managing this game and kind of like you know knowing what's going on in this game. You know, it's too many teams kind of just end up blowing this. Uh, so they had Teddy Bridgewater be a game manager. Good job to him doing that. Didn't do anything crazy. Uh, kind of used Kamara to just ice the game pretty much and make big plays. They didn't really. I mean, he had big plays, but a lot of plays were bigger than they actually looked. It wasn't like a huge play, you know, just game-defining moments. To really, to ice the game is throughout the game, even early. That that's how you do it when you're up. You run the ball, you milk that clock, and they did a good job with that. So well coached um, game there. Uh, that all started because of the punt return touchdown, and that was great. Uh, and then uh, the fumble recovery for a touchdown. You know, the Saints just continue to do that. Last year they did that. They won so many close games doing that. I'm like, all right, this is. Good, good for them. A little lucky. Don't know if it's going to continue. They continue to do it, so I don't know if it's luck anymore. You can't really call it luck anymore when a team just continues to do that. Playmaking defense. They'll give up some yards. It's playmaking defense, though. Uh, and that could that could be the difference to win a championship game as long as Breeze, uh, Breeze is healthy there at the end. So good game for them. Well coached. It was a bigger win than what the score will show. The Seahawks, it's almost like the third week in a row. I know they won the other two games, and I've been saying this about them. It's like... They're like good, but it's like you see Russell Wilson the way he's playing, he's very good, and he has these ridiculous throws. It's just like they can't. It's just like it's weird. Like go score, like go. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I kind of been saying it the last couple of weeks. It's like this guy can throw the ball. He can run. Uh, I mean, Chris Carson doesn't really look the same as last year. He's kind of had a little rough so far to start this year. Some fumbles, and you know, not allowed burst. But I mean, he can still run. It just looks like they can go put more points on the board. They're just kind of like. They just can't go put the ball in. It's weird. It's really the same thing happening against the Bengals. The same thing happening against the Steelers last week. Just go downfield and score. It's like they can move the ball. Russell Wilson looks good. 
I, I just don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe they'll maybe they'll be able to figure it out. Um, you know, you can't put too much on the defense here because, you know, just kind of just fluked two scores non non defense. And when the Seahawks defense was on the field, I should say it's a weird game. Credit to the Saints. You know, that's a big time win, regardless how you get it. Um, you just got to get wins here at this point with the breeze out, and then hopefully you can come back healthy and normal. You know, Seahawks got to figure it out. You know, because even though they're two and one, people are like, "All right, don't panic," because they just lost their first game. But and I'm not saying to panic, but you know, it's kind of been the same thing every week. And this game, oddly, was kind of a defensive game. I thought it would be a shootout, and then I hear the Browns' secondary is out pretty much. Uh, and it's. I thought it'd be more of a shootout. I don't know. This is where the NFL is unpredictable. I mean, we all picked the Rams, but this is still unpredictable. Um, this game, I mean, Goff tried to help the Browns out, tried to give it to him. Not a good game from him. Um, if he feels any kind of pressure, even if it's like not that much pressure, like he just kind of panics a little bit. We saw it at the end of last year. Uh, Baker wasn't good too. A lot of uh, too much moving around the, in the pocket, almost getting out of the pocket. Um, you know, I think he could take off and run sometimes where he doesn't. He just, it almost looks like he's panicking a little bit, kind of on golf side a little bit. Just a little looks a little different. Just really doesn't know what to do. It doesn't look like the same guys last year. I think we can start, uh, hopefully we can start to see that as the season goes on back to the Baker we saw at the end of last year and what the one we're expecting. Um, you know, and they had, what did they have a draw on third nine or whatever that was? I mean, I questionable play calling from kitchens, uh, especially at the end when they had a chance, you know, golf gives them a chance. Um, you know, really not a good game from either team, honestly. I guess the defense has stepped up. But um, they had first down and goal from around the five at the end of the game. And the, the plays were just too complex. They were trying to – there were plays where they needed to develop and somebody was going to come across and eventually get open in the, in the back of the end zone at the end. I don't like those plays. You need to run – I mean, on first down, you should have ran a play action on first down, in my opinion. You could have even ran the ball. But I don't know how there's – on first, second down, I don't know how there's no play-action play um, with a tight end and a receiver over the top. Like, I just don't know how that play's not there. They were overthinking things, getting complex. I know Baker had a wide-open run, people say, but it is tough to take off and run in that situation. Um, you know, the pick – if you know, the pick – I don't really blame it on him. They got great – yeah, credit to the Rams getting like, pressure on that play. Clutch, big time. And credit to them covering in the back of the end zone for so long, too. I thought Clay Matthews was real good. It's really impressive to see him – uh, playing as good as he is, um, you know, people kind of thought he was just washed and done. Where the, in the Green Bay, where he they thought he would last his whole career there. Uh, so he had played a really good game here. In this one, they got pressure on Baker, kind of threw him off. So defense wins the game. Really, it's crazy. Uh, Cooper Cup was pretty darn pretty darn fantastic in this one too. So he's been impressive. Uh, but weird, unpredict. Even though we predict the Rams to win, like it's unpredictable. Like this, like how does it make any sense? This game was. It felt even more of a defensive game than twenty to thirteen. It felt way more defensive than that, and it kind of 2013 for this game is a defensive game. Um, so it's just weird. It's just unpredict. Un- it's the NFL, unpredictable. It's still. It's kind of. I always say week one's mysterious, and you can't predict anything after week one, and it tells you nothing. And I kind of said week two definitely applies, and even week three kind of applies. So we're kind of over that hump here. Uh, let's let's see what these teams got now. I mean. The Texans were 0 3 last year, then they went on a crazy streak. So, any of these teams can do that or the opposite. Um, we've seen the Panthers, what they did last year. Um, a lot of football left. A lot a lot could happen here. But that, we're going to be back every single week with this recap. Uh, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know, know you guys' thoughts. You know, there's a lot to talk about here. I probably missed on some things. You want to talk about some things in the comments. We'll go over players of the week with some game film uh, later in the week. Uh, I like enjoying that new series. So we're kind of talking about this week again there. And we have all kinds of predictions, updated power rankings tomorrow. Excited for that. A lot of movement, hopefully. Uh, but that's going to do it for this one. Please subscribe if you haven't quite yet. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching.